In the spring of 2022, Miriam and I headed out on an epic road trip on our Can-Am Spider. From our home on the Virginia coast to the Pacific coast and back, we traveled over 7,400 miles through 17 states in our 61-day asphalt odyssey, which we nicknamed Lap Around America. In today's video, we review the trip and chat about what we liked, what we didn't like, and what we learned. Okay, well, we're going to talk about the uh, Asphalt Odyssey we just completed, gosh, about uh, a few weeks ago now. and uh, That's two and a half months, actually. Hard, <laughs> hard to believe. <laughs> yeah, so uh, we're rested and thinking about future trips. So first, we're going to talk about uh, the Asphalt Odyssey, Lap Around America, and some of the thoughts about that. Kind of a debrief. A debrief, if you would. Okay. Yeah. Well, you want to start with uh, lessons learned. What what would you uh, identify as a lesson learned? Well, there are three lessons learned. Uh, primarily, is I, we pack too much. Uh, I know I pack too much. I, even though I went through methodical planning about what to pack, we pack too much. Yes, yeah. that that was on my list too. Uh, you know, I realized in hindsight that instead of bringing a large, well, I mean, it was an overnight bag. It wasn't that large, but instead I should have used the compression bags and just because so many times we just spent one night at a location and it felt so silly loading up a luggage cart when we were just going to be there for you know, one night. Exactly. What would you have changed to pack less? Well, I would have taken uh, less clothes after we got stuck in Tulsa. I reorganized everything. We had this, we seemed to have some extra time in Tulsa. Yeah. And uh, I packed everything into one pack. So my extra pack never or seldom ever left the trailer. If I needed something out of it, I'd just go get it. But it stayed zipped up in, in the in the trailer. So I would just pack everything into uh, into the one bag. Just limit yourself to, to one small space. And Absolutely. And another one of the regrets I have is we spent too much time on the interstate. But we felt ourselves playing catch up after our time spent in Tulsa. So Miriam, <laughs> where are we and what time is it? Oh my goodness. Kellysville, somewhere outside of Sepulpa, Oklahoma, broke down. We are broke down. <laughs> uh, that portion of the trip wasn't very flexible because we had reservations in Yosemite and Sequoia National Parks. They were not movable, so we had to pedal fast to get back on track. Result, too much time on the interstate and not the back roads, which I really regret. I thought you were going to mention something about pacing, particularly at the beginning of the trip. That was the next thing I was going to bring up. Uh, more rest days, less ride days. We found ourselves getting a little fatigued, and the result of our pace is we had some plans to meet up with some of you guys, and those plans fell through because there simply wasn't enough time, or we were exhausted. Yeah, and we hadn't ridden all winter, and uh, even in the month of April, we hadn't ridden because the temperatures were still pretty cool here. Yeah. And it was hard to go from zero to 100, <laughs> if you will. <laughs> so at the beginning of the trip, it would have been better to, to take it slower for the first several days, don't you think? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. What surprised you in the trip? Several things. Um, the customer service that we got at Tulsa Power Sports was over the top. We did not expect to them to stop work on other machines to fix our spider. 
but that's pretty much what they did once the park came in and to get us back on the road. And so we were really, really pleased with that. Uh, for those of you who hadn't followed through, our fuel pump died just outside Tulsa. We get to spend an extra, how long in Tulsa? Six days. Six days in Tulsa. Um, and they let us keep the trailer uh, inside the customer service lounge area. So it was out of sight, out of mind for people to go by and perhaps take the trailer or loot the trailer. But most of our gear was still in there except what we needed at the hotel. So that level of customer service surprised me. So thank you Tulsa Power Sports. Got us back on the road. Well, and, and really the friendliness of the folks we met, all the all the Tulsa, what, Tulsans, Tulsite, Tulsaites. People who live in Tulsa. <laughs> yeah, or the surrounding areas. Uh, it was just, couldn't have chosen a better place to be broken down uh, for such a friendly group. And another thing that surprised me, I knew that Route 66 is a thing. That road has not been active since 1985 when it was decommissioned, but it's still a tourist destination for a lot of Europeans. It was just surprising the number of people who were driving Route 66, uh, what was left of it, just to experience that culture that we, we you know, as Americans don't even realize that, hey, it's a thing and it really is. So what surprises did you have? What were your thoughts? Well, the, uh I didn't expect Nevada to be as beautiful as it was. You know, I guess I associate Nevada with Reno and Vegas, which are, are great towns, but I don't associate them with natural beauty. But Highway 50 uh, through Nevada was just stunning. And I, I didn't realize we'd be at elevation. I think we averaged about 6,300 feet. It was just a really cool part of the trip. And, and it was just, I, I had no idea. <laughs> I, I didn't realize how vast the Mojave Desert is. You know, it's one thing to look at it on a map. It's another thing to spend two and a half days riding through it. At 100 degree temperatures. Yeah, yeah, that, that was our, our hottest uh, temps were in the Mojave Desert. And, but it was beautiful it, in a, what did you, you, you described it as beautiful desolation, kind of yes. an otherworldliness. And, and I just, I love that. And the other thing I would say is there's, I didn't realize how spoiled we are in Virginia Beach in terms of having lots of choices for uh, grocery shopping. Uh, there are places, like even in Kentucky when we were doing the Bourbon Trail, uh, there are places where folks don't have many grocery store choices. And you know, the ones we found were, uh, I'm sorry to say, kind of pitiful. Um, so I, I feel like there are a lot of places, I guess you would call food deserts. Yeah. You know, so I, I, I did have a sense of um, how spoiled we are here. Yes. Next, accommodations. What were your favorite and least favorite accommodations along our route? Well, I, I expect that um, we, we both hold this uh, opinion, but the Red Cliffs Lodge was, yeah. was hands down our favorite. Yes. There were some other great ones. The most expensive nightly rate, but well worth the price. <laughs> My mother always said I had champagne tastes for a beer pocketbook, so I guess that's <laughs> true. But it, it was just it, it was just a lovely splurge. Um, uh, Sky Ranch Lodge is a close second. Mm -hmm. That was also lovely, lovely as was Ragged Point Hotel. Those are the same ones I would pick. Now, what about your least favorite accommodations? Well, <laughs> I, I, well, part of it was the accommodations, part of it was our timing. The, I don't even remember, was it a Holiday Inn or, well, I can't remember the brand of hotel. Where? Council Bluffs, Iowa. We, we had the misfortune of being there during the um, Baseball College World Series. Yeah, it was a nice. It was a nice location, uh, set on the Missouri River. If I get the, hopefully the correct river, and it was a, a good location. It's just. It was just crowded and noisy, and the, our room was small. We, we only, there was only one chair, uh, so we both couldn't sit in the room at the same time. It was. It was, there was no quiet spot in the lobby. <laughs> yeah, that was supposed to be, based on our timing, a, uh, a rest day the next day. We decided to uh, hit the road and go to another location where we found more comfortable accommodations. Yeah, yeah, it was okay. The, you know, lots of lessons learned about finding accommodations, and we realized 
you know, when when the fuel pump died and we're trying to come up with a plan B and, you know, uh, kind of stressed, we chose a hotel that was near Tulsa Power Sports. We thought that would be a smart strategy. Well, it, it wasn't a good choice. You know, when the police are in your hotel two nights in a row, <laughs> it's not a good sign. It um, wasn't the hotel's fault. It's, it's, it's geographically the located near the interstate and uh, another four-lane highway intersection. Um, it was just the neighborhood. It, was it wasn't in. a prosperous area. Yeah. Even the Uber driver had kind of given us a heads up to be careful at night. Uh, so yeah. we, sh we should have been more responsive to those clues. But anyways, it all, it all ended well. But. Yeah. So let's talk about food. I'm always talking, ready to talk <laughs> about food. Okay. Do you, do you have a favorite meal? Hands down. And, and I'm sure there are others, but this is the one we, we ended up at. And that is when I learned that there is a distinct difference between a New Mexico cuisine and Mexican cuisine. I am in love with New Mexican cuisine. Yeah. Thank you, New Mexico. You have <laughs> ruined it for me. I can't get that unless I go back to New Mexico. Well, there you go. Yeah, yeah for me, we, you know, we, we had lots of good meals, but yeah. I really enjoyed the meals that we shared with family. You know, my kids, Katie and Mark in Yosemite. Um, we didn't film my brother and his wife, Jen, uh, but we visited them in Indiana, and I really enjoyed uh, sharing meals with them. And all the meals that we shared with the viewers that we were able to meet up with. Yeah. Um, that, that was a good time. That For me, that was really the highlight of the trip, getting to meet folks in person and, and when, when you're bread. talking spiders and you're talking travel I frankly don't remember what I ate during those <laughs> meals or what they even taste like I remember the conversations and yeah. meeting the folks it was good fellowship yeah it really so was thank you for that well in in terms of the ride itself what, what were your favorite uh, segments hands down US 50 the loneliest road in America through Nevada yeah. Before it was the loneliest road in America, it was the the Lincoln Highway. Before it was the Lincoln Highway, it was the Pony Express route. Before <laughs> it was the Pony Express route, it was a Santa Fe stagecoach line. And before that, it was part of the one of the wagon train routes uh, across Nevada. So uh, yeah. that roadbed has been there for a while. And it just goes through some of the most spectacular landscapes. Words escape me. I, I want to go back. Yeah. So Miriam just asked me if this is just as beautiful as Yosemite. Oh yeah, this is what I've been dreaming of. To drive down a road, look at this road. It's straight as an arrow and it just keeps going. We'll go over a mountain pass and drop down into another straight as a laser road, followed by another one, followed by another one. And if I see him animated, it's just because it's just so friggin' gorgeous. It's so open and wow, I'll come down now. I, I want to say um, it was riding through the Rocky Mountains as we left Granby, uh, heading through the Rockies. It happened to be the anniversary of Wolf Creek Pass, and and thankfully uh, the riding conditions were were great. It was a little bit overcast, but the roads were dry, and the view was spectacular. I guess we got up to what uh, twelve thousand feet elevation. And there was snow in the peaks. We felt like we could reach up and, and touch the snow. But no sleet, no thunder, no <laughs> lightning, and no hypothermia. Yeah, yeah, we were we were very comfy on that ride. Yeah. And it, it was just glorious, absolutely glorious. There were, there were lots of great rides though. I loved Flagstaff to Sedona. You know, I love everything Utah. You know, the, the interstate through Utah is so beautiful and uh, you know, as we uh, got closer to Moab, it was just spectacular. So couldn't get enough of that. So if you could go back to just one spot that we visited this year, which spot would you choose? Sure, and that is thunder. There was, <laughs> we actually had to wait to film this between thunderstorms. It's a rainy There's, Sunday. Yeah, it's a rainy Sunday. The Southwest United States. <laughs> <laughs> it's not very specific. I want to do US 50 again, going east to west, different perspective. I just want to experience that again. It is awesome. And perhaps even more time on Route 66. We didn't spend nearly as much time as we wanted to, 
uh, because of the mechanical in Tulsa and just more time on the in the more back roads. Um, yeah. I, you know, here again, I kicked myself. Too much time on interstates. Yeah, yeah. Well, for for me, I want to go back to Colorado. I, I want to go to Rocky Mountain National Park. I'd, I'd like to visit some of those ski towns, particularly some of the, the smaller ones off the beaten path, you know, the, the back roads idea. Um, I, although I would be happy repeating any part of, of the Southwest or, or even the California segment of our, our trip. Um, we love New Mexico, love you. I mean, it, it, as you said time and time again, it was a scenic orgy from the time we left yeah. Tulsa to when we left the Rockies in, in Colorado. The downside of that was once we got out of the Rocky Mountains into the Great Plains, I don't want to say it was disappointing. That's not the right word. But after we've experienced the gorgeousness of the Southwest, the Great Plains, different perspective, and it just didn't hold our interest as much as I wish it had. Well, Going through Nebraska and, and Iowa, gorgeous places in their own right, but uh, maybe we were tired. We were tired <laughs> and uh, yeah. our memories were filling up with the things we've already experienced. So let's Let's talk money a little bit. Let's let's be real. So okay. I think you need to come clean. Were we on budget? Oh, heck no. <laughs> we were over budget, but what a way to go, huh? We did not go into debt for the trip. <laughs> we spent money we already had. Yeah. We had anticipated this trip some time ago and began to, to pull our pennies and we to yeah. fund the trip. And I don't think anybody should go in debt for for a vacation. And yeah, that's and, what this was. And for us, it was worth it to eat tuna noodle casserole for, for a while Yeah, uh, for this once in a lifetime experience. But but looking back, what, what was the best splurge just right oh, off the top of your head? Um, the cast strength bourbon we bought at one of the uh, distilleries. So when you get cast strength, you get, not only do you get more alcohol, you get more intense flavor. And yeah, a little pricey, but it was worth it. Uh, and also to uh, go on a tour and to drink bourbon from the cast, which is the oak barrel, in the barrel house. That was worth it. <laughs> I, I, we, there were several things we splurged on. Uh, one that comes to mind, we had an awesome uh, breakfast at the Sky Ranch Lodge. You know, yeah. We were watching the planes at the, the airport right there. And uh, I think, did we spend $50 on breakfast? It was, it was crazy, but it was, um, it was just a delight and our server was very personable. It was, it was a fun morning, fun way to start the day. Absolutely. Yeah. So what was the worst value? The worst value for our money was to fill up the spider along the California coast for $9.79 per gallon. Uh, yeah, the spider takes premium gas. We need the high octane. But that was a little over the top outrageous, uh, especially since the cheapest was in Oklahoma. And I'll see if I can find the notes and put that up here, how much it was in Oklahoma, because they sort of make the stuff there. <laughs> But uh, fortunately, it took two and a half gallons, so could it, have been a lot worse. it could have been a lot worse. We weren't driving a big gas gasoline SUV. Did you happen to tabulate how much we spent on gas? I had budgeted about eight to nine hundred, and I think we came in close to fifteen hundred because we budgeted back before the gas prices went up. Yeah, and that was thirty-seven ride days over a sixty-one day yeah. period. So. Yeah. Yeah, for me, uh, my biggest money regret is, you know, when we were planning the trip, um, you know, you, I, I guess we overcommitted. There were just so many things to do, and I had booked this food tour in Monterey. It just looked like a lot of fun, a walking food tour. But we'd had a rough ride day the day before, and uh, our accommodations, we didn't realize that the Carmel Valley accommodations were kind of nestled in the mountains and uh, it was kind of like a snake <laughs> riding up there for what 45 minutes it or so. It was an arduous time-consuming yeah. ride. Yeah and he was he was just zapped his energy was gone and he was sore and so we had to cancel and had to eat that expense unfortunately they wouldn't refund any of our money so I'm sure it would have been a delight it's just you know 
one of, another lesson learned is you've, you've got to be careful not to, to overcommit and and maybe um, if, if things aren't refundable, you know, wait till closer to that time to see if it's going to work into your plans. Yep. But. Well, now we need to start working on the next trip. <laughs> Well, and there's so many places we'd like to go. Um, Quebec, uh, New England, Great Lakes. Wait, wait, wait. It's raining again. Maybe in a couple of years. <laughs> okay. All right, guys. Well. We appreciate all the support during the trip. You know, there, there were times that I, I'm not sure we would have had the get up and go if it weren't for your your emails and comments and, and messages Absolutely. to us. So we, we really thank you for that. We, we felt like we were traveling in a posse <laughs> yep. of friends. Yep. <laughs> Thanks for watching. And don't forget, if you haven't already, consider subscribing and give us the thumbs up button if you like the video. Yeah. You know so it do. helps the algorithm so more people get to see this and perhaps they can enjoy some of our travels also. We enjoy sharing them. Yeah, y'all take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.